Assemble here to study another portion of your word. We just pray, Father, that you would help us to uh, clear our minds, that we would be able to receive the things that will be taught unto us. And we just pray, Father, that you would bless us, Father, that we would always be able to listen to your word, Father, to help us to grow, to help us to deal with the things, Father, uh, that we cannot deal with, but we know uh, through your blessings, Father, we'll be able to get through them. We just pray, Father, that you would be with those, Father, who are yet sick, shed in, and bereaved. We just pray, Father, that you would give to them a reasonable portion of health and strength, Father, that they may once again be made whole and that they would be able to uh, arise from their uh, sick beds to go about their normal duties and chores. We pray, Father, that you would be with the leadership. Uh, pray that you would bless the uh, elders here, Father, that they would continue to do your will and to uh, shepherd the flock. We just pray, Father, that you would forgive us of our sins, Father, whether they have been by words, thoughts, or deeds. We just pray, Father, that you would bless us, that we would be found doing those things that are pleasing and acceptable to thee. And Father, these blessings we pray in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. And now, our teacher for the evening will be none other than Brother Randall Tucker, minister to the South Union Church of Christ. Oh, praise the mighty name of King Jesus. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Aren't we blessed, family, to be here in this moment in time? Hasn't God been a gracious God? Hasn't he looked far beyond our faults and he's met all of our needs? We praise the Lord because he's mighty. We praise him because of his majesty. We praise him for he is marvelous and he has done marvelous things. Listen, family, we are just so delighted to see you here for another encouraging word from God. On tonight, we pray that this message finds you and your family well. We know that even in the midst of some dangerous times, God is still providing his divine deliverance. And so if you've come to this page on tonight, if you're looking on this channel for some spiritual motivation, for some inspirational encouragement, then we assure you, family, you've come to the right place. We are always uh, delighted to see you come our way. And uh, it's always good to have my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, the superlative saints of the union, online real time for Bible study. Now we know that as we begin on another week, we want the Lord to give us the necessary sustenance for the journey. And we believe that he will. So it is our prayer that you will take out your copy of God's everlasting word, that you will navigate over on your electronic devices, but meet us or beat us to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. We will see, in fact, if there is a word from the Lord. Genesis, the 12th chapter. And when you find verse one, you should find these wonderful words. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. 
and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Is that in your Bibles? All right, family, we would like to flow and uh, feed from the theme on tonight, the Boulevard of the Blessed. The Boulevard of the Blessed. Family, when we consider what it means to travel, to drive, to ride on a boulevard, we're speaking of a wide thoroughfare. We're speaking of a wide street that is many times very well developed and manicured. On each side, we will have sidewalks. We will have a median usually that runs through uh, the middle of the street, uh, dividing the directions of traffic. We will have to the side, to the left or to the right, we'll have businesses, we'll have buildings. Uh, the place is built up. We're speaking of a metropolitan thoroughfare family. Uh, listen, I am thankful that we are familiar with the physical reality of what it means to travel on a boulevard. Let's lift that a little higher in the spiritual realm. What does it mean, family, to travel on the boulevard of the blessed? <laughs> I believe that just like man can cultivate, man can orchestrate, man can facilitate, and man can designate certain places of urban development, I believe that the Lord can develop his people. And I believe that the Lord will give us what we need, put us on main street of blessings and allow us to receive the goodness of God every single day of our lives. In a real sense, we need the Lord to bless us today. And uh, I hope that I'm speaking to someone out here who loves the Lord. I hope that I'm speaking to someone out here who trusts the Lord, who knows that there are going to be some difficult days, but I'm still holding on. Is there anybody here with me on tonight who has seen some difficult days? You've been through some trials, you've experienced your care of troubles, yet through it all, you know that God kept you. Amen, somebody. When we speak of the blessed, we're speaking of those whom God keeps in his pavilion. He hides them in his pavilion. He is the refuge in the time of trouble. He is the shelter in the time of storm. Family, we are living in some perilous times and we need to seek the will, the way, and we need to be the people of almighty God. So now the question is, what is in it for us on this side? You know, sometimes when we approach uh, the scripture, I believe sometimes uh, we approach it unrealistically. But you know, the apostles, when they were being commissioned of Jesus, they wanted to know, uh, Jesus, where are we going? Where are you taking us? Where are you leading us? And that's a good question for us. We want to make sure uh, that we are headed in the right direction at all times. Listen, when you follow God, you can never go wrong. Somebody ought to help me teach for a moment. I say, when you follow God, you can never go wrong. When you trust the Lord, you can never go wrong. It seems like sometimes that uh, if we follow the Lord, that we're going to be delayed, that our uh, blessings will sometimes be postponed. But no, no, my friend, God is always a very present help, even in the time, you got it, of trouble. Listen, let's unpack this text. Now, we know that this is a text of prophecy. We know that uh, this is Abram who becomes Abraham, who is the father of the Hebrew nation. And of course, he is the progenitor of the faithful. Now, I am just thankful that everyone who comes by Christ is of the seed of Abraham. The Bible teaches that we identify as Abraham's seed, and because we are of Abraham's seed, we are heirs according to the promise. This particular promise is mentioned in Genesis chapter 12. Now, what God is doing, God is taking a man uh, who is Gentile. Now, don't forget that Abraham was Gentile. He's taking a man who's Gentile, but watch the text. He's going to make of this man a great nation. 
and watch all families of the earth will be blessed. I'm interested family and I'm thankful that the Lord is interested in blessing all families of the earth. I need someone uh, to download that message into their spirit right now that God is interested not in just blessing a small percent of the world's population or select few a group of people. God is interested in blessing the entire world. Now, this thematic thrust of worldwide blessing uh, is carried over even in the New Testament. You remember that Jesus said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he sent his only, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe it in him shall have everlasting life. Listen, God sent Jesus into the world that the entire world might be blessed. But then the question that has to be raised is where can I find God's blessings? Well, I believe that God, he puts us and places us on a path, on a boulevard of the blessed. In other words, God has a designated thoroughfare. He has a designated street. He has designated lanes uh, by which the blessed should travel. Now, in this particular text in Genesis 12, let's uh, examine closely verse one. The Bible reads, now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Now, point number one, postulate number one is if we're going to be blessed and if we're going to travel the boulevard of the blessed, that we must listen to the Lord. Amen, my friend. We must listen to to the Lord. There are a lot of voices in the world right now. There are a lot of influences out here for us to be distracted by, for us to be led by, for us to be confused by. We must listen not to the influences of mankind and not to man himself, but we need some folk who trust the Lord enough to listen to God and God alone. Now, listening to the Lord, family, if we're honest about it, it's not always easy to hear his voice because there are many disturbances in life. There are many distractions in life and uh, there are many things going on all around us. And sometimes, family, we have to learn how to isolate uh, the voice of God so that we can hear him and no one else. Amen. How do you isolate the voice of God? I believe, family, that in a realistic way, we listen to the word of God. You see, God speaks through us through his word. This is the revelatory uh, compilation of God's will for our lives. And whatever God is going to reveal, he has revealed it in his word. Amen. My job, my task, my endeavor should be that as his child, I rely on his word. Before I make decisions, I consult the word of God. As I'm moving throughout my career, I consult the word of God. If I'm going to try to build a godly family, I must consult the word of God. If I'm going to live out my faith, I must consult the word of God. The word of God is our guide. It is our GPS. It is our global positioning system. The word of God is our compass. The word of God is the divine instrumentation that the Lord has given all of his creation, but we have to accept it if we want and wish to drive in the lane and uh, ride uh, on the boulevard of the blessed. Listen, we have to listen to God. When I make a decision, I need to ask, is God in this particular decision? And where do I see him? Where do I see him placing me in? Where do I see that I can uh, let my light shine? Where, where uh, do I see him getting glory out of this particular situation? We must learn, family, to listen 
to God. Now, the society uh, is vying for our attention. Every single day, family, if we're honest, uh, we are bombarded with commercial breaks and we are bombarded with advertisements. We are bombarded with all of this propaganda and uh, various aims to get us to buy into what the world has to offer. Now, I want to uh, make the record by saying uh, that everything that's out here is not inherently evil. I don't want us to walk around with spiritual blinders on. Listen, everything that's out here is not inherently evil. We are not trying uh, to get people uh, to move about uh, with a spirit of fear, or with a spirit of anxiety. Uh, but God would have us to be aware. God would have his people to be aware of what is all around them. John put it this way. He said, uh, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, this does not mean that we walk blindly through life and that we disregard all of the situations that are going on. I know that uh, we've had some dealings with people. I've had some associates uh, that were so fixed on uh, the scripture that uh, they didn't understand the relevancy of scripture in their lives today. Uh, family, simply put, uh, we are living epistles read of men daily. And so we have to interact with the world. Paul said that if you're trying to live without any evil influence, that you would have to leave this world. Uh, God does not want us to leave this world because he put us here to give the world its flavor. Uh, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. How are we going to influence the world? Uh, we must influence the, word, the world by listening to the word of God. Amen. And when we listen to the word of God, we can uh, influence the world to do great things for the Lord. Uh, please, family, please uh, let us always remember that God did not put us here to be the spiritual lone rangers. <laughs> God does not want us to influence the world uh, by policing the world, but he wants us to influence the world by the lives that we live. Is that right, anybody? Somebody ought to help me teach on tonight. I, I am thankful that I don't have to ever open my mouth to declare I'm this or I'm that. If I live according to the precepts and principles of God, the world will see that I am his child. Amen. The Boulevard of the Blessed. Let's drop down. Let's look at verse number two. As we examine verse two of Genesis 12, the Bible reads, and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. This particular phrase uh, in verse two, and I will make of thee a great nation. This, this verb, I will make, this verb make, uh, God is saying, I will complete you. I will accomplish in you the purpose that I designed for your life. Oh, don't miss this family. God is speaking to Abram and he's putting him on a path of being blessed. But he says, I must make of you. I'm going to complete in you. I'm going to do for you and praise the mighty name of Jesus. I'm grateful family that we don't have to create it for ourselves. Listen, when God creates for you, then God will establish you. That's what the text is teaching. Notice Abraham, uh, he just has to listen to God. And if he listens to God, then God is going to establish him. You see, the world teaches us that um, we must establish ourselves and that success comes once we have, uh, well, uh, have been well established in our careers and once we've pulled our, ourselves up by our own bootstraps. But family, it is impossible for anyone to pull themselves up. We all depend 
on one another. The text uh, teaches us that God wants Abram to depend totally on him. Not that Abram has the power to make of himself a great nation. Not that Abram has the power to make of himself a great name. But Abram, who becomes Abraham, must listen to God. And here it is, trust God, that God will complete in him the purpose that he has designed for his life. Maybe, just maybe on tonight, someone's listening and someone is looking for the purpose in their lives. And I've come to encourage you to trust God, that God will reveal unto you the purpose. God will reveal unto you the intent for the path of which you travel. Listen, don't ever think that you are traveling this path for naught. Don't ever think that you're traveling through this experience of life and you have nothing to offer, nothing to give back, nothing to share with humanity. God has so equipped you, uh, my beloved brother and sister. God has so equipped you. He has placed uh, unique and specific gifts in each of us. And God is going to use what he's placed in you to make the world a better place. I say amen and praise God. We must believe that God is working even when we don't see how he's going to work it out. We don't see how he's going to bring it to pass. We don't see how he's going to take us over. We have to trust that God has a purpose for our path. Amen. God has a purpose for your path. Let's drop down and read a little further. Now watch this in verse two. Uh, God says, and I will make of thee a great nation and watch this. And I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. The Lord wants us to see that as he creates individuals, he will also create groups of people. Watch this. God says, I'm going to bless you, Abram. And then because of your uh, being in the boulevard of blessings, because of my blessing you, I'm going to establish you. But the blessings are not just for you. They are for others, many others who are coming after you. <laughs> God says, I'm going to make of you a great nation and from you many more all of the world, many more families will be eternally blessed. I have to ask myself the question as I'm riding down the boulevard of blessings, how is my being blessed blessing someone else? Because blessings are not just for us to enjoy, for us to hoard, for us to keep, for us to hold to ourselves, but no God has blessed us that we might be a blessing to others. I'm talking about traveling down the boulevard of blessings. Someone needs to know here tonight that God is using you for a specific reason. There are some people all around you. Someone is watching you right now. Someone is depending on your phone call. Someone is looking forward to an encounter with you. They are thankful for your love and thankful for your encouragement. They are thankful for your energy, for your brightness, for your radiant spirit, for your vibrant attitude. You are a blessing to someone. And sometimes we can't see. We can't see how we affect others or how we may influence others or how we encourage others. But I guarantee you that if you're traveling down the boulevard of the blessed, the blessings are not just for you. <laughs> they are for someone else. Amen. I say they are indeed for someone else. And so, uh, listen, as we as we uh, approach our landing field, uh, we must realize that as the called, as the, the saved, amen, as the redeemed of the Lord, that we are in a position uh, that God wants to use us to bless so many others. And we are on this boulevard of blessings. You know, uh, when I consider traveling physically down the street, down the boulevard, 
I am grateful to understand that I am in a metropolitan area. <laughs> Praise God for the city. Nothing wrong with country living, nothing wrong with country life, and nothing wrong with the country. Because if we're honest about it, that's where our roots, someone said that's where our roots are from. <laughs> and that's where our roots are found. Praise God for a city. You see, the city has some commodities, has some amenities, has some conveniences that help to sweeten the quality of life. Come here for a moment, child of God. The Lord knows how to sweeten the quality of our spiritual lives. See, God is interested in the development of the whole man, a mind, body, soul. God wants to bless us psychologically and emotionally, physically, socially. God wants us to put, uh, he wants to put us on this boulevard of blessings. And we have to trust him that when we walk, when we come, when we ride into this metropolitan arena, that he sweetens up life itself. You see, I have to see my covenantal relationship with God as a sweetener of life. Don't look at your Christian walk as being an obligation, but it's a privilege. Can I get any help in the house on tonight? It's a privilege to be the called out. It's a privilege to be a child of God. It's a privilege to ride in the lane of blessings. It's a privilege that God would choose you, amen, choose you for a time such as this. Let us continue to travel, family, down this tremendous boulevard of blessings, knowing that God will build us up just like the city is built up, just like the city has buildings and businesses and sidewalks, medians, and, and all kinds of uh, open area for uh, exchange of human commodity. Uh, God wants to bless us spiritually in this same lane, in this same vein, in this same way. Uh, the boulevard of the bliss. Say it with me, wherever you are. The boulevard of the blessed. Amen. Does someone believe this on tonight? Do you believe that God has chosen you for a time such as this? And that God's going to bless so many lives because of the blessings that he puts in your hand. And if we are good stewards over what God has blessed us with, just like he did for Abraham and made uh, a great nation and other nations were blessed because of the faithfulness of Abraham. Listen, Abraham was not perfect. Abraham was faithful. Oh, if we had a little more time, we'll, uh, we would delve off into that. That's a, another subject for another Sunday. But uh, Abraham was not perfect. Uh, let me put it this way. He was not without sin. He was not without error. He was not without flaw. But he was faithful. Oh, praise his holy name. The Boulevard of the Blessed. I pray that this message has been uh, of some spiritual import for your life. And listen, um, as we travel down this road of life, there are going to be some, some challenges. There are going to be some, some times of testing, but we can make it through uh, because we know that God gives us the strength to be more than conquerors. Amen. Listen, if you would like to uh, have a further Bible study, or if you need prayer, uh, you need prayer, uh, then we want you to call the number that is on the bottom of your screen. We believe uh, in the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous. We know that they uh, avail much. Amen. And now, as we go down from this moment of Bible study, it is our prayer that you will have a prosperous week. It is our prayer that you will have a blessed week. It is our prayer that things will work well for you and your family. Amen. And always remember <laughs> that here at South Union, yeah, we love you and there's not a thing that you can do about it. May God bless you. May God keep you the boulevard of the blessed. Good night.